DC is a catastrophe. The comics are shot to hell with political messaging and cringe pride related character reimaginings and the movies, <laughs> well the movies are about as chaotic as it gets. Franchises start, they get rushed, get destroyed, they bomb, get remade, get rehashed, actors are in, then they're out, then they're under arrest for assault or getting humiliated in court for defamation and pooping in somebody's bed. I could go on literally forever, but I won't. But it's no wonder that James Gunn and Peter Safran were brought in to try and start it over, try to organize this absolute mess into something a little bit coherent and their first move sadly was getting rid of Henry Cavill which really didn't make them popular because Henry Cavill is basically what Siegel, Boring and Schuster were actually thinking of when they invented Superman but I defended Gunn and Safran because I like to be a bit pragmatic, a little diplomatic and it seemed that carrying an actor over from the old universe wasn't entirely conducive to successfully creating a new universe and now Oh boy, do I look stupid, because apparently they are, they're fine to continue working with one actor, Ezra Miller. Hello, welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will, see what I did there, and I'm sorry, at this point, let's just, let's just be honest here, Ezra Miller has to have some dirt on, like, everybody in Hollywood at this point. There is no way this guy gets work again if he doesn't have something on someone. He is a serial, a serially arrested, assaulting groomer who carries, you know, one of these. And, um, I mean, how do you, how do you justify working with somebody like that in movies without getting bad press? I mean, DC, just wake up. If you're going to get rid of Henry Cavill, right? then you have to clean out everyone. That's the only way you get away with this scot-free. It's just not happening otherwise. It's never gonna happen. The fans will never forgive you for Cavill if you keep somebody else, especially if that somebody else is Ezra freaking Miller. Are you nuts? Oh, good God. Whatever. Anyway, we're gonna head over here to Variety and take a look at this because this has just come out. And um, it does go into quite a lot about the, well, you can read the title, Secret Meetings, Tequila and Black Adam vs. Superman, how Dwayne Johnson's bid for DC Power flamed out. But the part that everybody's actually talking about is one particular paragraph that we're going to get to in just a few minutes. You do not want to miss this. Okay, from chaos comes order to paraphrase Nietzsche, and uh, that is certainly the hope in the new year. When it comes to the DC Extended Universe, I thought it dropped the E. I thought it was just DCU now. Could somebody confirm that for me in the comic, uh, comments? Rather, not comics. Which endured the most tumultuous 12 months of any studio division in 2022. Amid the upheaval, the reverse plan, the release plan, excuse me, for the upcoming The Flash teetered following a series of arrests and meltdowns involving its star Ezra Miller. Closely guarded Aquaman deal points were laid bare in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation trial and the $78 million Batgirl movie was permanently shelved in post-production as a tax write-down. That's some radical stuff, gotta say. I mean, it really is. They, they, I mean, Zaslav came in and he shook, shook the tree. He cleaned house. All that was just an appetizer for an executive shakeup that landed James Gunn and Peter Safran in the DC driver's seat. But perhaps nothing was as dramatic as Henry Cavill returning briefly as Superman and getting everybody's hopes up in a Black Adam cameo in October, only to lose the gig two months later. Right, so that brings us basically up to speed. Cav Cavill announced that he was going to be Superman again, as he was apparently told to, and then he was told uh -uh, not happening. So, that's all well and done, and the article goes into a lot. I'll probably read it further in a future stream, maybe chill of the fans on Sunday or something like that. But uh, this part in particular is what got everybody's attention. After talking about Shazam and the comparative earnings versus budgets of the other movies in the universe, we come to this, where it says, As for what else Gunn and Safran have planned for DC's future, Sources describe it as a broad but not blanket reset. Now that is 
first of all, a little worried because at this stage in the DC movie, like actual history of DC movies, it's as bad as it's ever been. It's an incoherent, bloated mess of different directions all the time and must really, God, really must be just, just wiped out. Look, you got your Snyderverse, you got your whichever version of Justice League. There are two versions of Justice League, for Christ's sakes. I mean, either you like the snarky, Whedon-esque, colorful plot that makes no sense whatsoever, or you like the dark, grim, dark, noir-esque, well, not really noir-esque, just, just grim dark. Zack Snyder's Justice League that's four hours long. Personally, I think I preferred the Zack Snyder one overall, but I acknowledge that the plot still makes very little sense. In any case, that's about as bad as it could possibly get. So at this point, though, nothing is ruled out. So despite the fact that you really, really do just need to draw a line under this chaos and get back to what? what constitutes the story just do it look just do it simple just do a superman movie right do a batman movie do a well you, a wonder woman movie maybe and then you could do other characters you could do green arrow you could do the flash you could do all these other characters right you can bring in bad guys for all of them you can have gorilla grod you can have solomon grundy you can have everybody right but do it over 10 years and every now and then have them team up occasionally. And then comes the next Justice League. But this time done properly. I mean, that's just what I would do. But apparently, they aren't content to just get rid of Henry Cavill. No, they now have to rub salt in that wound through this. Given that Miller has stayed out of trouble since beginning mental health treatment in the summer, after apologizing and then reneging on that apology. Yes, that's right. Some executives are amenable to continuing with the actor as the world saving speedster after the flash bows on June 16th. Aquaman, Shazam, Blue Beetle and Guns, Peacemaker series for HBO Max could all have a place at the table. Gunn and Saffron, who were recommended by DeLuca, have the full backing of the Warner Brothers Discovery top ranks. So, what we're finding out here then, as I said, is you have a double standard. You go, oh, well, we've got to get rid of Cavill. We can't have characters from the old universe. No way, we can't have that. No. It's not fitting with our direction. Oh, but Ezra Miller's okay. Ezra Miller, the guy who has been given restraining orders and told to stay away from children. That guy, he's, he's good for business. All right, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I've been defending Zaslav and, and Gunn and Safran for quite a while now. Like, I've been saying, okay, we have to wait and see. We have to find out what, what this leads to. But at this point, I'm sorry, but absolutely not. No. Simply no. No. I, am, I have I've lost my faith. If I see Ezra Miller in anything besides The Flash, you're done, as far as I'm concerned. But that's me. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. As normal, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel too. It really helps me out. It really, really does. Also, follow me on social media at Will of the Fans on absolutely everything. And uh, buy a t-shirt if you want from my Teespring store or a pair of shorts or there's some wife beaters in there as well, I think. Anyway, I'll be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, see you next time.